Welcome back to another edition of Live from Red Hook here at the Function House. Tonight we want to welcome our very special guest DJ, Mr. Bone Shaker. What's going on? Highly anticipated show. I've been yes. getting hit up from a lot of people. Oh, uh, yeah? And they, they can't wait to watch the yeah. show. Tell me why. Is it these little know. videos you put out? Maybe. It might have something to do with it. What goes into those videos? How long does it take for you to put uh, those videos? It depends. You know, some of them take a while. For the most part, you see the, the, the flow. And most of them are very similar, yeah. you know. But some of them I can execute in three takes. I've had other times where they take 10 takes and then my GoPro dies. <laughs> and then I got to charge it. And then I got to get another adapter so I can charge while I record. But... That's yeah, I got to put you onto a better camera. We, we oh, yeah. got a couple of better cameras. Well, you could come record that. them here. I could. It's a three-hour drive, though. It's like <laughs> two, three hours well, Where are you coming in from? Suffolk County. Really? Yeah, so that's Suffolk where County you were born now. and raised? That's where you're from? I was born in Queens, then I moved to Elmont, and then I moved to Suffolk County. So when you started DJing, you were down with Queens? You were no. It was once I first moved to Suffolk. I started in 94. Really? Yeah. And what made you get into this DJing thing? What, who gave you the buck? Uh, my father was a DJ. My mom's brothers were Hold both up, DJs. Hold up, stop right there. What was your father's DJ name? DJ Holiday. Okay. And then uh, my uncles were DJs. So when he met my mom, you know, they're like, oh, we DJ too. So they DJed together. He started bringing me to gigs when I was really young, probably like seven, eight years old. I was going to gigs and just hanging out. So what gigs, what music was he playing? What gigs was he doing? Uh, a lot of 80s R&B, disco, break beats. My uncle was more into the hip hop, you know, the 80s stuff, 90s stuff. And whatever was around at the yeah. time, you know. You but remember the clubs that he was doing? Not really. I was young, dude. Yeah. So my pop's in his 60s now. So, like, by the time I was old enough to even get involved in it, he was only doing weddings and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So and then you, once You must have a crazy vinyl collection. I do and I don't, you know. I got rid of a lot of stuff. I had so much stuff. I bought out a record store at one point, so <laughs> I had so much stuff. Like, And this is when I was still living home, so he was like, you got to get rid of this. I had stacks. The stacks in the garage, and he's like, "Yo, you gotta get rid of this stuff." So, so what type of music was your dad playing when he when he was DJing? Mostly disco and '80s R&B. You know, that's I grew up listening to a lot of that stuff, like Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh, who else? Is it, you know, you know the stuff I'm talking about. Yeah, you yeah know? of course. Yeah. All '80s R&B stuff, break beats, disco. My uncle played the hip hop, reggae too. So, like, I grew up listening to a lot of older stuff, and then my cousins too. That's the thing, like. I'm not that old, but like my music knowledge is a little older because of the people I hung around with. You know what I'm saying? So you were so, schooled properly. Yeah, I was just kind of thrown into it at a young age. And then once my dad saw I took an interest, that was it. I got a pair of texts when I was 14. And I was at Astro Pair New Marks and he showed up with a pair of texts. Nice. <laughs> <was> like, sick. <laughs> a pair of blue dogs, I remember that. <laughs> Horrible. So when did you um, start getting into the turntablism and scratching? That was probably like early 2000s, and you know what it was, and I told him too, I seen Slinky and Scribbles when they did that thing on New Year's Eve, and then they had another little show, oh, you wanna be a DJ or so, such and such, and he was breaking down crab scratching and just all high intensity cuts, and I was like, I gotta learn how to do this. So I then went, asked my dad for a uh, Techniques, Techniques SH DJ 1200, the yes. battle mixer. Got one of those, yeah. Got one of those for Christmas, blew the fader out the first month, <laughs> and then, that was it. Like, I kept practicing, practicing, practicing. And honestly, it wasn't until I got my 57 that I was like, all right, I've actually gotten better with my cuts. I'm like, my cuts actually sound good because that, that, that technique fader was just horrible. And then I just, you know, I just stayed at it. I'm not really a turntablist at all. I enjoy scratching a lot. So I, you, when you first started scratching, your father must have looked at you like... Yeah, he was getting pissed off, like, taking his... Andy Biko's on vinyls, two of them, and taping them all up, <laughs> markers and shit. He's like, yo, what are you doing to my vinyls? And... It's like, I'm sorry. What I got does he you. say now? Now? He doesn't say much now at all. <laughs> does he still play? No. no. He bought a, uh, a Newmark controller, and then he, he used it for like a year. I think it's collecting dust now. <laughs> he still got a whole sound system, but he doesn't do anything. Like, last party we did, I don't even remember, man. It was, I was young, probably like early 20s still. I'm not that old, but early 20s. Yeah. It was probably the last party I did with him. And then, like, once I got into the nightclubs, too, that was it. I was like, that's it. I would do private events on my own, and then it was like, that's it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I mean, that's cool. It's very few people that get to play with their father. Yeah. You know, I mean? you know it, it built a good bond at one point when I was younger, and then it kind of got weird. So, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I yeah. just do my thing. Yeah, you know how it is with parents, man. So, yeah. you know. No, but, it, but it also helps in terms of uh, being schooled. Yeah. 
because a lot of a lot of young guys coming up, they don't sort of they, they don't get they don't have like a, like a, a mentor of the sorts that can sort of mold them with the music. I mean, look at like the Martinez brothers. They yeah. were molded by their father. Yeah. You know, at a very young age. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's from those roots that they were actually able to be, you know. Who they are now. Yeah. And those guys are huge. Yeah. So that's good, man. That's good. Yeah, it's been a long road. <laughs> it's been a long road. So I feel like I've been doing this forever now. You're also down with Crooklyn Clan? Yeah. Riz and Sizz, those are my dudes right there. How'd that all start? Uh, that, you know, it's funny. When I first got into, like, the scene in Long Island, like, and I first got, like, consistent residencies, I had one spot I got, locked that down, and then summer rolled around. They're like, all right, you're going to be the resident at CPI. I think I was, like, 19 years old. So I remember, like, you're going to do the front room. It's Crooklyn Clan's doing the main room. And I went in that room twice that night because it was packed, mobbed out, like, probably 3,000 people. I think it was, like, Memorial Day week or 4th of July week or something. And they were just bugging out, dude. Records flying, and they had a they had a Yuri in there too. So it was all rotary, and they were just throwing it down. And that was like my first big party I ever did. And then after that, I really didn't see them much. I always bought all their records, and then it wasn't until I started doing radio. Did you get to meet them that day? That night? No, that night it was just so mobbed out. I spun all night. I walked in there just to go see, like, what's going on in the main room. Go in there, it's just zoomed out, and I ran back into the, you know, I was spinning. So yeah. I just went to go check, see what's going on. But then years later, I started doing radio. I was already doing radio already, but I got more just intense with my radio shows and started doing a lot of edits on my shows. And then I got to the point where I was just doing my shows on a computer, doing takes on a computer and doing them. So what I radio would, station? Party 105. So I, I did a lot of shows on there. I had my own show for a couple of years on there, actually. And then uh, that just turned into, I'm like, yo, I got all these edits I'm doing. I'm like... And I went on the site, and I'm like, let me freaking hit these guys up. So I told my manager at the time, I'm like, yo, let's get in touch with these guys. Got in touch with them. They're like, oh, send like send five over. And we listened to them. So I sent them over. I was ready, too, but I didn't have enough of what they told me. And I was getting ready to go to Florida in like two days. So like, yo, we need 15 more. You're in. I'm like, crap. I'm like, I got to get all these done. So I literally like stayed in the studio for like the next two days. Got them all done. Like whatever I had finished, added to whatever I had done. And then that was it. Like... I got in with them, I pushed really hard. I ended up, right after I got in with them, I ended up doing getting a residency and Sizz was like one of the, like, the guys we brought in once a month. And I remember like, it was like the first gig with him. I was just transitioning over from vinyl to CDs before I went to Serato. And he walks in the booth and I'm opening and he just knocks my whole thing of CDs over all over the place. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, nice to meet you, Sizz. And I was just like, oh man. And I'm like, don't touch it, don't worry. He's like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, flipping out. I'm like, don't worry, man. I'm like, it's cool. <laughs> Spilled like 500 CDs on the floor oh, in the DJ man. booth. It's cool, man. <laughs> you know how that is. You the got them all in the order and everything. And so it was like, I was like, yo, you know what's funny? I did that to another guy, this dude named Barry Hoffman, who like, he was one of the early DJs I spun with when I first got in the scene. And this guy schooled me, dude. Like, I would watch him spin. Like, when I first met him, it was funny. He was like, oh, what do you play? I'm like, I play everything. He's like, what do you play better? I'm like, hip hop. So he's like, all right, you're doing main set. I was only supposed to be opening that night. So then it just turned into like some nights where he would do the main set and it was just a show. And this dude played with, Remember the little mini discs? Yeah. He had a dual controller with the pitch, like the Denon controllers, but he had he used to rock two of those, and he'd go nuts. Live blends, sound effects on one of them. I'm like, this guy's with, with crazy. The yeah, dude, he ran two of them and would put on a freaking show. Like, I watched him in rooms with over a 1,000 people, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, this guy's nuts. So, like, that guy, and there was another guy named uh, George Marino. Like, my formatting in nightclubs, like, I learned a lot from those guys. Just how to stretch your night and not shoot your load too early, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, Be yeah. able to have stamina to go. Like, I can go all night, 10 to 4, no problem. This, this Just gotta space everything out. Yeah, this is Long Island. So, I learned a lot out there. I learned throughout the years a lot from a lot of different people. So how did Those you recover when he sp spilled all your Oh, that? Seeds. I was fine. I was just opening and closing for him the night. Oh, so I was okay. like, whatever, yo. I was like, don't even worry about it. It was a bunch of promo onlys and a bunch of stuff that I burned. So you actually so. Went, you went from vinyl to CDs, then you got onto Serato. I was one of like the last guys on Serato too. Like all my friends were like, "When are you gonna switch?" I was like, I'm so not So who doing was the it. guy to tell you to go to Serato? I just told myself. I just finally, you know what's crazy? The day I switched over, someone stole that CD case out of my truck. Really? <laughs> yeah. The <laughs> day I went home on my computer and was loading Serato up, I go outside, my truck's open, my CDs are gone, and then I get like an email like a month later, like, "Oh, I found your." some CD case in your car is on the side of the road. I'm like, it's probably the person who stole it. So I'm like, I'm like, just keep him, dude. I'm like, I don't even want him. I'm like, so you had, you had all the music digitally already at yeah, that time? Yeah, I had everything already swapped over. A couple friends hooked me up. Everything I needed, I had. So I was like, I don't even care. Freaking keep the things. So when you were playing CDs, 
what type of CD decks we use. CDJs. That's the only reason why I did it. Now I hate them. Like I kind of backed off of them in the last five years. There's a lot of venues I spun at, and that's all they had. And some venues had both. It was a lot easier in some places, you know, if you got vibration and whatnot. The CDJs are running a lot safer, and in the summertime, outdoors they run a lot easier too with the humidity and whatnot. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't like them though anymore. I hate playing on CDGs now. Completely hate it. So talk to us a little bit about QuicklandClan.net, the new site. What are you going to be doing on the site? Uh, they actually, I think they launched already this week. Uh, it's 2.0, so it's a bigger and better site. I think the pool and everything is all combined. And I'm actually doing a drop this Friday. I haven't dropped in probably about seven or eight years. Probably about seven, actually. So I'm doing a drop this Friday. I got the call a while ago, like, yo, we want you back on there, get some joints ready. So how many joints are you dropping? I'm just going to drop a pack this Friday, and then I'll have another one in the next week or so. But this is going to be stuff consistently every month, like new stuff. It's going to be... So how often are you are you making edits? Are you constantly making, like, yeah, you're storing them for the yeah, site? Do you have a whole yeah, bunch of stuff yeah, aside? Yeah, yeah. it's been a couple months now that I've been just waiting, waiting for the site to drop. So, <laughs> so when you were doing it back, like, when when it first launched, how was that like in terms of volume? Were you just selling that, tracks like yeah, crazy? Yeah, that I was, I was in the studio every single day, every day, like Monday through Friday. And then the weekends, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we'll run out of work. And then I was doing radio shows too. So I was in there like every day religiously from eight until nine, 10, 11, 12 at night, you know? So I put out my joints consistently every single week. It paid off. I built the name off of it. I was one of the first guys on Long Island on that site too, which was pretty cool. So like being on the site and dropping remixes, do you actually get booked off the site? Yeah. Like you got yeah. a lot of bookings I flew out to Switzerland multiple times just because of that site. Really? Dude sold me on the site. I was on like the top monthly movers. He emailed a bunch of dudes. My crew was the first ones to respond. Paperwork was sent over two days later and I was going to get my passport from the post office. <laughs> and then we went and I was like, it's cool, you know, it was dope. You know, that's why like now I'm looking forward to getting back on there. Like now I'm older, I've kind of molded my style more. I have a lot more experience than I did back then. So I'm looking forward to, you know, getting the ball rolling again with the website and getting some joints out there. You've been practicing, bro. Yeah. It's like- I See those videos. It's, yeah, it's practicing just, you know, it's, it's, I enjoy it. Like I was telling you when I spoke to you yesterday, I'm like, yo, if I don't spin for a while, I go crazy. Like, I gotta touch the tables. I just, I have to, like. You have a passion for music. Exactly. Like, ever since I was young, this is something I've always wanted to do, and I've pursued it for a while. And I've been pretty successful with it, too, so I'm not stopping anytime soon. So what's, <laughs> Still in what's, the what's next and in the pipeline for, uh, for Bone Shaker? Crooklyn and just building my name more. You know, the way it is now, you gotta build your name in other ways besides just DJing, so. How's your social media game? That, that's what I got to work on. That's what I got to build more on that, you know? Yep. Just building more f more followers, stay more consistent with my videos. Even though I, I'm kind of consistent, but just more, more shorter videos, just more interactive with the fans and whatnot. I need to get better with that. What's your real name? My real name? <laughs> Augustus Cruz. Augustus Cruz, named after my dad. Yeah, nice. So, so what goes into your music preparation? What do you mean, like if I'm going out for the night? Yeah, yeah for a gig, like uh, going before a gig. You know something, it's like that, I'm just gonna check and make sure I got all the new joints ready. All, all the new heat that's getting blasted off and making sure that's in my heat folder. And where are you getting that music from? What sites are you? Are you on? Uh, DJ City, Crooklyn Clan. Well, not, I, I get some stuff from the vault, but like for pool wise, DJ City and I-12 Inch are the two sites that they I deal use. with. Yeah, that's kind of like standard right now, I feel like, you know, for a lot of guys. Those two sites. Yeah, I use like 12 inch. Yeah. And, and how is it like, how do you, like, how do you keep yourself, like, um, fresh in terms of the music? Like, music? Yeah. You know, because I mean, there's, you know, there's so a ton much, of music that comes so out. There's so much that comes out, like hip hop joints, everything. You know, something like for the clubs, depending on where you're spinning, too. Like, I know the places I'm spinning at, they want the new joints. They want the new joints they're hearing on Hot 97, the songs they're hearing 30 times in a day, you know? So it's like, as long as you're driving around, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to hear what's hot. You're going to know what's, what's popping right now, and that's it. Like, you can search around, but, like, it's kind of hard to find a hot record before it really gets pushed on the radio. Sure, the way people yeah. are nowadays, like, they kind of need to get the approval before they yeah, like it. DJs co-sign, like, the radio DJs co-sign yeah. those club anthems. Yeah. Because at first, you could hear one of those records, and maybe you're not feeling it. 
and then you hear Flex bring it back like six or seven times, and, and all of a sudden, it's the biggest it. record in New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yep. That's cool. Well, we're looking forward to hearing you play. I'm looking forward to spinning. Yeah, thanks for coming <laughs> down. We're going to take a two-minute break, man. and we're going to get Augustus Cruz <laughs> up on the tables. <laughs> Peace.